12 News, your local election headquarters. We hosted an hour-long televised debate last night with the Democrat, uh, Democratic candidates for governor debating and discussing all sorts of topics last night. They sure did. The four candidates sparred on a number of issues. Of course, the flooding this yeah. week and also the state's response to that weather event and specific challenges that faced each of the candidates individually. Here's Chelsea Jones with some of the highlights for us. Chelsea. Well, guys, Tim White and Ted Nisi really grilled each of these candidates. For Nellie Gorbea, she was faced with questions about the problems with the election voting machines where the wrong candidate names were displayed. For Governor Dan McKee, it was questions about out a federal investigation into the state contract with the ILO group. He refused to answer Tim when asked about if the administration had been subpoenaed. And if we take a look at Helena Folk, she was questioned about layoffs when she was at the helm of Hudson's Bay and her donation to Mitch McConnell back in 2014, which she called a mistake. For Matt Brown, he was challenged on his TV attacks against McKee. He justified those. The candidates also tackled abortion rights. Matt Brown says the administration should have put abortion funding in this state's budget, but uh, each other candidate has also agreed along the campaign trail with that sentiment. The governor says, though, he did send letters to the General Assembly. Right now, uh, there are tens of thousands of people who do not have truly have that right because they're on Medicaid and, and they're banned from getting an abortion or they're in state insurance and they're banned from getting an abortion. I have been consistently in favor of a woman's right to choose relative to I, besides putting an executive order in to make sure that women who come to Rhode Island or pro providers that provide the uh, medical procedure of abortion are protected. As I said before, the first action I'll take is to make sure that one third of women in the state do have access to abortion. Talk about 2018 so, and you campaign so for I the anti-abortion health I have care. Speak to advocated, that, please. Yes, I have advocated, I have marched, I have testified in favor of abortion rights in this state. Now, at a gubernatorial forum I actually hosted last week, the likely Republican nominee, Ashley Kalish, says though she is pro-life, she would not alter any legislation in place already on this topic of abortion. Live in the studio, I'm Chelsea Jones, 12 News. 12 News, also your local election headquarters. Last night, hour-long televised debates, Democratic candidates for governor sparring on a number of topics. Yeah, the issues included, of course, the flooding that happened earlier in the week and the state's response to that weather event. They also tackled specific challenges facing each candidate individually. Here's Chelsea Jones with a look at some of the highlights. So with six days left until the primary election, each of the four candidates were faced with some tough questions from failed election voting machines to where they each stood on abortion rights and how they've each been criticized along the campaign trail. Now, in a rapid fire round, each candidate was asked questions pegged things the Rhode Island governor should know. It included the median price of a home, which Helena Folks answered the closest to the answer, which was $410,000. She said 400. They were also asked about pension in the most recent testing scores. The governor was also asked first how much money the state spends in each budget. He answered correctly with $5 billion. And then speaking of funding, you just saw uh, it on your screen, the Tidewander Landing Project, a big talker. Here's what the governor had to say about the funding of that soccer stadium. No dollar goes in, no taxpayer dollars goes in until the project is completed. And we're also evaluating supply chain costs right now. I believe the cost of that project is going to come down. We'll find out. We have to move away from shiny object economic development and sit down and do the hard work. Do the hard work of building affordable housing for our people. Make sure that Pawtucket schools are rebuilt and reinvigorated. He cast the deciding vote, Governor McKee, to take $60 million of public money, our money, while people are struggling to make ends meet, struggling to afford housing, and gave it to a corporate developer. We are, we are building the most expensive USL soccer stadium in this country. 10,000 seats and a lot of inattention to detail. The candidates also tackled that major flooding event from Tuesday. The governor defended the state's response. Both Helena Folks and Nellie Gorbea felt like the administration could have done a better job communicating what happened. Matt Brown says he would outright fire RIDOT Director Peter Alviti, saying the climate crisis needs more attention. Live in the studio, I'm Chelsea Jones, 12 News.